What's up everybody, AnimeX here, and in this video, I'll be doing yet another part to the What If Naruto Was a Hyuga series. Now, obviously this is because you guys hit the like goal in a rather short amount of time, so once again, I have to up the like goal. 2k likes and you guys get a part 3 to this series. Now, just like always, I'll be recapping the last part of this What If, then jumping to the new material. So, without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> In the last part of this what if, we kind of dealt with Naruto's backstory, how Naruto was brought up, and we kind of talked about Naruto's childhood in general. We also talked about the training that Naruto would have received as a Hyuga, and we also talked about how he would develop as a character, and just as a ninja in general. We did end up going through Naruto, you know, actually like learning the Shadow Clone Jutsu, and we ended off the part with basically Naruto doing the bell test with Kakashi and Team 7 coming together and doing a few missions. So they'll be together in general, and that's where we'll jump right back into the story. Now, like I said, we left off with Team 7 becoming a team in general, and we are now at the point where they have been presented a mission by Lord Haruzen and Tazuna, and just like in the original, they head out to go do their duty and make sure he has safe passage to the land of waves. Now, while they are walking with Tazuna, Naruto activates a Byakugan so he will be able to spot any possible attacks or sneak attacks from far away. This means that when Naruto and the rest of Team 7 pass a puddle that looks rather innocent on first glance, or at least to someone without the Byakugan, Naruto decides to attack this puddle, startling all of the Team 7 except Kakashi who knew that they were about to be ambushed as well. This means that Naruto takes down the two demon brothers before they even really get the chance to attack them, and Naruto questions them on why they're attacking. Of course, they don't answer, and this leaves the entire team less prepared for an attack than they were in the original. Kakashi grows suspicious of Chunin from another village attacking them out of nowhere, and suspects that there must be some foul play with Tazuna, although he keeps these thoughts to himself. So they decide to keep journeying more tense due to the fact that they are already anxious and ready for any possible sneak attacks that may come towards them. And then, right on cue when their tension is at the highest, another attacker shows up. Zabuza Momochi appears right in front of them and with his presence comes a large thick cloud of mist. As soon as they see this, Sakura and Sasuke instinctively look towards Naruto, whose Byakugan can see through this, and they are looking towards him, hoping that he can possibly be the light at the end of the tunnel, or someone that could just help them see through the mist. And they notice that Naruto's eyes have already transformed, showing that Naruto is ready and prepared with his Byakugan, veins around his eyes and everything. Naruto makes a Shadow Clone and they put themselves back to back. No one really understands why Naruto has his clone and why they are back to back since Byakugan, at least from their knowledge, can cover a full 360 degrees. And while for the most part that is true, Naruto can't see everything around him except for a very small blind spot right where his neck connects to his spine. The Shadow Clone's vision can offset this weakness so he has his clone at the ready, just in case Zabuza does attack a weak spot. Naruto looks through the mist as he sees Zabuza and without hesitation, Naruto attacks. Naruto runs at Zabuza full speed, thinking that Zabuza can't see him through the mist nearly as well as he can as Naruto can see Zabuza, and he basically thinks that he has the advantage. He then leaps towards him and is almost and is almost chopped in half by the executioner's blade. Naruto is still cut across the chest and actually is inflicted with a very deep wound, but he's able to dodge the swing just enough to avoid a fatal blow. Naruto then attacks again, this time knowing that Zabuza has the field advantage here, and instead of going for a finishing attack or maybe trying to close off all of his chakra points, Naruto decides to play decoy for Kakashi, who he knows is already thinking of a strategy. Naruto then starts using the gentle fist technique against Zabuza, although he is able to block all of these attacks with his sword, none of them actually connecting to Zabuza himself. Naruto then sweeps his legs down, knocking Zabuza off ba balance, and then Naruto strikes. And as soon as he connects, Zabuza turns into water and splashes all over the place, confusing Naruto for a second, revealing himself as a water clone. And then, Naruto is stabbed behind, from behind by Zabuza, who is smiling as he sees his sword plunge straight through Naruto's chest. And everyone, including Kakashi, is stunned and horrified for a split second. Naruto then struggles as he turns and smiles at, at, around spewing blood from his mouth. Hehe, <laughs> gotcha. Naruto then poofs, and the joy of taking out a target turns to anger as Zabuza realizes that he got played like a fiddle. Naruto charges Zabuza and grabs him, telling Kakashi to attack now, do not worry about him. This shout snaps Kakashi out of his stupor and forces Kakashi to act, and attacks Zabuza with a water dragon zuzu that sends Naruto and him flying back into a tree. Now, due to Zabuza flying into Naruto and Naruto flying into the tree, this knocks the wind out of Naruto while Zabuza is able to recover somewhat quickly from this. He then grabs the gasping Naruto by his neck and turns the tables. 
He rushes over to the water and dunks Naruto's head underwater with one hand while he wards off Kakashi in the other, telling him that if Kakashi makes another move, he'll kill Naruto right where he stands. Naruto, meanwhile, is being held underwater by Zabuza, who is much stronger than him, and basically someone that will be able to keep him underwater with no trouble whatsoever. Now, usually Naruto would be able to hold his breath and formulate a plan while dunked underwater, but right before he had been shoved under the water, he had just had the wind knocked from his lungs, and he was gasping for air, meaning that Naruto is already starting to lose precious oxygen to his brain, and he is starting to black out. Damn it. Is this how I'm going to go out? I haven't achieved my goals yet. I can't. I can't die here. I can't let it end here. Naruto was thinking this, but his body won't respond to what his brain is thinking and what it's saying to him. His muscles are deprived of oxygen, meaning that they won't be able to react to what he wants. Naruto then thinks of how Neji would handle this situation, and he gets focused. He reactivates the Byakugan, and he looks at Zabuza. If he wants to get free and take a breath, he needs Zabuza to release his grip, so he starts using the gentle fist technique on Zabuza's arm that is holding him down, closing off the chakra pathways that is allowing him to amp his strength even further, and Zabuza's grip loosens, ever so slightly, but just enough for Naruto. With one last burst of energy, Naruto breaks free and climbs to the surface, gasping for air and coughing up a storm. He then swims away as quickly as possible and gets saved by Kakashi, who tells Naruto that he did good, and he lifts up his head fan, and just like in the original, Kakashi starts mopping the flow with Zabuza using Genjutsu copying Zabuza's techniques and outperforming Zabuza at every turn. And just when Kakashi is about to deal the killing blow, Haku comes in and saves him by pretending to kill Zabuza with his Senbon. Haku then explains that he is someone who hunts down rogue ninja, and when this is said, Naruto, who still has his Byakugan active and has somewhat recovered from his dunking, stands up and asks, Hey, you, why are you lying? Haku and Kakashi are caught off guard by this question, since it just came out of the blue. Naruto then continues, I may not be a genius with the Byakugan, but even I can tell when someone is lying with these eyes. I saw your heart rate increase ever so slightly when you said that you track Rogue Ninja. I also saw that your facial muscles changed ever so slightly when you said what you just said, indicating that you were lying. And if you were to take off your mask, you would show that right now you were sweating, even though it is a cool day outside today, while you were being grilled. So let me ask you again, why are you lying? Naruto glares at Haku. Haku stares back at Naruto and sees an intensifying glare from him come onto his body. Naruto's gaze is so strong and so scrutinizing that Haku just wants to get away from him as soon as possible, but Naruto obviously won't let that happen, at least not without a fight. Until he gets an explanation, at least. Naruto then looks at Zabuza and his jaw drops as he realizes something. He then grabs his kunai from his pouch and charges at him full speed, surprising the entire team along with Kakashi. Naruto then is about to plunge his kunai directly into Zabuza's heart, but Haku appears in front of him and kicks him in the chest and knocks Naruto away from Zabuza. Naruto then yells to Kakashi that Zabuza isn't really dead, it's a trick, and as soon as he says this, Haku throws multiple senbon at Naruto and stabs him, making Naruto howl in pain. And with that being used as a distraction, Haku grabs Zabuza and runs away. After this, Naruto struggles to his feet and he looks back to Kakashi, Tazuna, Sakura, and Sasuke. I don't know why, but I feel like we might be might why I feel like we might have another encounter with them. And as soon as that happens, Naruto's Byakugan deactivates, Kakashi puts his headband over his eye, and they both collapse to the ground, completely exhausted and injured from that day's endeavors. After that happens, Sasuke slings both of them over his shoulder, as Tazuna says that they could stay with him for a few days while they recover. While walking to Tazuna's home, Sasuke is deep in thought. As of right now, his suspicions of Naruto being a complete monster in terms of his potential hit Sasuke flat in the face. He did suspect it's based off of Kakashi and Naruto's bout for the bell test, but the way Naruto handled himself in a real mission, along uh, also with the way that he was actually able to trick Zabuza, along with, <laughs> shows that he was basically able to show glimpses of moments that, you know, although they didn't show all the time, show brief glimpses of skill and prowess that just make Sasuke jealous. Sakura, after seeing all of this, is deep within thought as well. She is wondering if the Naruto that was so bold and confident just a second ago the same Naruto that was a goofball and someone that was at the bottom of their class not too long ago. This complete and utter 180 on Naruto's skill and overall demeanor as a person is something that freaks out Sakura and makes her feel pretty useless as they continue to walk. They finally reach Shaz in his home, and just like in the original after a couple of days, Kakashi wakes up and he starts to train them on how to control and manipulate their chakra well enough to walk on trees. Naruto is actually the one who, has the best, who is the best at this and is actually able to do this with relative ease. And that is due to him being a Hyuga, and part of his training consists of chakra control so he can actually use the gentle fist technique. So, he's, he, so he was able to pick up on this skill rather quickly. After this, Naruto goes to relax in the woods, similar to how he did in the original, and he meets Haku. Now, upon seeing Haku, Naruto realizes two things. 
is the same person that attacked him with the Senbon the other day, and unfortunately due to the Byakugan seeing through things, including clothes, when he looks at Haku, he realizes the hard way that Haku is a boy. <laughs> if you get it, if you get it, if you get it, you get it, if you don't, you don't. Now, after Naruto throws up in his mouth a little bit, he slowly reaches for his kunai as he wants to take down this person while their guard is clearly down, and he strikes. Naruto then closes his eyes somewhat as he feels resistance, and he realizes that Haku brought out a Senbon at the same time and attacked Naruto, hoping to catch him off guard at the same time Naruto was trying to catch him off guard. Naruto, hoping to take out the one person who almost saw through his trick and killed Zabuza, or at least from Haku's perspective, that's what Naruto is, Haku attacks as well. Naruto then reaches for another kunai and stabs at Haku, only to, in a mere instant, be stabbed dozens of times by Haku, who is much faster than him. This was so fast that Naruto's body couldn't react to that movement at all, or any of those movements. Naruto then jumps backwards as he drops the kunai and gets in a stance that, Nar that most Naruto fans should know well. Naruto wants to take this person out quickly, and since they are within the range, he wants to push himself beyond what he thinks is possible. 8 trigrams, 64 palms. Naruto yells this out as he starts spinning and starts a technique. Two palms. Haku is able to block this, though. Two palms, Haku is still able to block. Or four palms, Haku is still able to block. Eight palms, Haku can still block, although Naruto sees the strain that is on Haku's face. Sixteen palms, thirty-two palms. And when he says that, Haku wasn't able to block one of these, and his guard drops. Naruto then spins around, preparing to unleash the full sixty-four palms, pushing himself to the absolute limit. But when he does, he loses his footing and falls flat on his face, stopping short just before he finished the attack. Haku then sees this and decides to set up his ultimate jutsu, strong, a jutsu strong enough to finish off Naruto right then and there, the demonic ice mirrors. Haku starts off in one mirror, and when Naruto gets up, he's instantly blitzed by Haku, who dashes from one mirror to another, before Naruto can even process what happened. Naruto then has a huge cut across his face that starts bleeding instantly. Naruto is then in the middle of an absolute flurry of speedy attacks, cutting him all over the place, none of which are lethal wounds, however. As Naruto is getting demolished by Haku, Naruto is thinking and devising a plan, trying to figure out what to do and how he could possibly get out of this mess. Focus. 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 Pay attention. Look around. Observe. Analyze. Figure out what you need to do and do it. Naruto then takes a deep breath and his gaze turns deadly calm as he is in a complete state of focus and utter determination. Haku charges at Naruto once more and cuts Naruto. The instant that the cut is inflicted upon Naruto, he reacts and attacks Haku, narrowly missing him, but clearly moving at faster speeds than he was before. And through many a failed attempts, Naruto gets closer and closer until he does attack Haku mid-flight, before he is even hit. And when Haku sees Naruto's fist fly at him, he realizes two things. He can feel Naruto's chakra and even see a hint of orange chakra coming off of him. He, on he also notices that Naruto's face is calm now. He now has whiskers and his eyes are now slit-like. Naruto doesn't notice this, but in this focused state, he was able to accidentally call on Kurama for chakra and use it to move at speeds fast enough to catch Haku. And then, Naruto's attack lands, and once it does, Naruto goes in, attacking with a flurry of attacks that completely shut down Haku's chakra network, finishing the fight right there. Naruto then grabs Haku and brings him to Kakashi to decide what to do with him, and when he does, he realizes why Haku showed up so randomly, and why Haku was ready to actually attack. Unlike in the original, Haku did not show up just to chat with Naruto. Haku showed up to actually distract him from the real threat, Zabuza, who was attacking Kazuna at his home. Naruto then drops Haku and runs to go help Kakashi and sees that Kakashi is charging up a jutsu that seemingly has lightning spewing all over the place, and Zabuza is pinned by a couple of dogs. Kakashi then charges, and right before the attack lands, Naruto sees a blur rush past him and rush towards Kakashi at speeds that he can't keep up with, with his eyes nor with his body. And then he sees what happened. Haku sacrifices himself for Zabuza, but unlike in the original, Haku wasn't fast enough to take the brunt of the attack because Naruto did shut down Haku's chakra points, not allowing him to divert all of his chakra towards his speed. So this means that the Chidori went straight through Haku's lung, but it still was too shallow, or actually that point in Haku was too shallow, and it still went straight through Zabuza's heart as well, killing him, meaning that Haku bleeds out from the damage, but Zabuza dies as well. When Naruto sees this, he's in complete shock. He's surprised that Haku tried to give his life for someone that he didn't show those same feelings back, at least from what he saw. Naruto's focus state is broken with his temporary connection, along with his temporary connection with Kurama. Sasuke looks at Naruto and he grimaces as he sees Naruto. It's clear that Naruto has just been in a battle with the person who was fast enough to intercept an attack from Kakashi, making Sasuke more and more furious of his own weakness and his own inability to fight as a ninja. 
But as of right now, Sasuke can't act on these emotions. And Kakashi says that the mission is over. With an, an expressionless face, he says that it's time to head back to the village. And that, everybody, is where I'm going to end part two to the What If Naruto was a Huga series. Now, if you guys did like the video and want another part within the week, make sure to hit the like goal of 2,000 likes. Now, I know you guys can do this. You guys clearly can because you've hit that on other videos. And I think you've even gotten close to hitting 2K likes on part one. So, I know you guys can do it. It's within your bower level. So, go ahead, smash like if you guys do want another part within the week. Now, just like usual, got to do my shameless plug and, you know, get my get my plugs in there. But if you guys haven't already, consider joining my Discord because I do talk a lot more in there and I can't interact with you guys on a more personal level that I can't necessarily do with YouTube since I can actually talk back and forth with you guys. If you guys have what-if suggestions, that's going to be within the Discord down below. There's going to leave two Discord links, one that is my own Discord, and then there's going to be one run by me, Ty Learn, and The Masked Man. So I'll have both of those down below just in case you were interested in joining. Now, if you guys do want to support me on a more personal level, you guys can consider doing that with my, my Patreon, where I have a bunch of ranks that allow you to do different stuff and interact with me on a different level, or get some early access to stuff and get credits or um, get your name credited on some of the videos that I do, which most likely, for the most part, will be the what-ifs, similar to how the credits that I usually roll for, not really roll them, but since there's only one person, <laughs> but the credits that I have for the Child of Bower rank. Now, if you guys want that... You can go onto the Patreon and kind of check out what you think would be best for you, but I'll leave a link to that down below just in case you guys are interested. Now, as always, and with the shameless plug over, I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and as always guys, this is X signing off.